welcome to the signing of the Declaration for the Right to Libraries. I want to especially thank Edith Craig and Samantha Hathaway from the Public Library who helped plan this event. We're pleased that so many of you have joined us in this event, which is meant to draw attention during National Library Week to the importance of libraries in American lives. The declaration, which is laying on the table here, where we have uh, sheets for you to sign, and you can sign online if that's your choice. But it states, in the spirit of the United States Declaration of Independence and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, we believe that libraries are essential to a democratic society. Every day in countless communities across our nation and the world, millions of children, students, and adults use libraries to learn, grow, and achieve their dreams. In addition to a vast array of books, computers, and other resources, library users benefit from the expert teaching and guidance of librarians and library staff to help expand their minds and open their worlds. We declare and affirm our right to quality libraries, public, school, academic, and special, and urge you to show your support by signing your name to the Declaration for the Right to Libraries. Although University Libraries Dean Patrick Dawson couldn't be with us today, he's pleased that we have such distinguished guests with us in particular, and I use President Baker, DeKalb's Mayor Ray, and the DeKalb Public Libraries Director Hoover, who will each give us a, a few remarks, and then we will all have the opportunity to sign the declaration, and afterwards uh, we'll have refreshments downstairs. Thank you. President Baker? My first award. Oh, well, thanks for coming out today. Can all of you remember the first library you went into? How many can remember? I can. I was in uh, third grade, and I was in Odell, Oregon and we had a field trip going down to the city library. So it was a big deal, because I, I walked to school. It was my first time on a school bus. And we rode the school bus to the local library. And the local library is in Hood River, Oregon. I'm guessing nobody here has ever been in Hood River, Oregon. <laughs> but uh, it's on the Columbia River. And it's kind of like a cathedral. The, the, the room is kind of this big from that wall over to the exit sign and then it's got a peak ceiling about three stories high it's a one floor building but with a three story high ceiling uh, with glass it looks out across the Columbia River and up at Mount Adams uh, up the White Salmon River and it looks much like a church when you go into it and then I remember there was this aisle down the middle with the Dewey Decimal stacks on each side <laughs> And I remember walking into that, I, I just remember the smell of the books and looking out that window and I thought I'd really gone to a, a place of worship, which I had. And uh, we walked down the long aisle to the reference library and all these little giggly kids going shh, 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 shh. And we got to the end and there was the le reference librarian and she told us she was going to show us how to use a card catalog. <laughs> and she did world opened up. Suddenly all those books that had been just kind of decoration we walked through were now something I could access and they were really cool. And we were charged with thinking of anything we wanted to know in the world and going and finding something about it. What a big day. You know? And uh, from then on libraries became kind of a uh, weekly tradition. Going to the library was a big deal to go down and get books and read about something I wanted to learn about. And it kind of started the life of the mind in some ways. So if you can have the life of the mind of a third grader in Odell, Oregon, but it got me thinking and that world opened up and uh, the life of the Inquisition and thinking and, and reading started. And uh, it, it changed. It changed the way I went to school and what I thought about and, and, uh, and kind of where I've gone since. So libraries have played a big role. Fast forward many years, uh, my wife's mom was a librarian. So that was good to 
very into, and <laughs> she was also a wonderful reference for me, so uh, it's turned out well. I want to thank you all for coming out and thinking about those inspirational moments you had in libraries all the way along, from grade school on through graduate school, and how libraries have transformed what you've taught and researched and how you're changing other people's lives in the process. So thanks for being here today. Thank you. Well, I too was led to think about library stories and library history in my life. Libraries serve as local resource centers. Through networking agreements, there is access to much material that brings value to local residents. I'm pleased to join today in this American Library Association's Declaration of Rights to Library. Through my high school junior year English paper, I learned firsthand value to libraries. But in those dark ages, I had to travel to Chicago via the South Shore Railway, Railway from Gary, Indiana to access the Chicago Public Library. The Gary Public Library didn't have all the research material. I was doing a paper on the uh, stringing of the Atlantic Cable the telephone cable under the Atlantic Ocean to England. Um, so I conducted research at the Chicago Public Library for that paper. I later learned the value of the library network through Founders Library here at NIU. And later, the Cal Public Library joined a network of libraries throughout Illinois and Edith and Dee, probably throughout the Midwest, I believe. Libraries today place much material and services at one's fingertips. Choices on, or courses on computer technology are offered at the Cal Public Library. There's a grant there. I've taken advantage of some of the Word and Excel classes. They're hosted for citizens to learn. Free courses that just take registration. Meeting rooms will be available to study teams in the new expanded DeKalb Public Library to discuss their topics and research those topics. These are some of the valuable services available through our library system. We find them everywhere. NIU, KISH, public libraries, schools, and churches. These all add value to the community. Our citizens can access helpful material in these libraries in a very convenient manner. I'd like to thank the library staffs for giving us one of the necessities of life, our libraries. They represent an integral part of our society. And I'd like to turn to Lee Cooper for her comments this afternoon. Well, I'm going to share a little card catalog story to start because the Friends of the DeKalb Public Library just sponsored a trip to Washington, D.C. Uh, for a fundraiser for our expansion. And amazingly, small world, there were two former founders, employees, who are now working as librarians at the Library of Congress. So they took us into the reading room, and then they took us into the deep background, the room that houses the card catalog. And I got to actually pop through a drawer, and I said, well, how old are the cards? Because, of course, they haven't added anything since 1987. And they go back to the beginning of the Library of Congress. So I didn't even want to leave that drawer and all these things. So that's my little Library of uh, Congress card catalog story. But I want to share with you what DeKalb is like now at the public library. Uh, we have a mythology project going on in the schools. And the mythology project requires use of internet, broadband, uh, use of hard copy, what you and I would call a book, and, and collaboration. You have to meet with other people and talk about it. So where do you do this in DeKalb, Illinois, if there's 57% of the community who is on free and reduced price lunches? You are at the, at the public library. The library is jammed. So we have uh, one of the goals of the, of the Bill Gates Foundation originally was public libraries will have computers because that's the place 
that everybody has. Everybody can go to a public library for free and equal access to information. In DeKalb, our library was started in 1893, but then in 1930 there was a transformational gift of $150,000 by Jacob Hayes, in fact, founders, one of the founders is Jacob Hayes. Uh, so we were one room, it was a good library, but the average Carnegie building in the 20th century was $10,000. Jacob Hayes, at the beginning of the Depression, gave $150,000 to found the library. So we have a great library that's on the National Register. And with $11.6 million transformational gift from the state of Illinois, the largest grant ever given by the state of Illinois to a public library, we will have a, a really great modern library. So we are looking forward to that. We thank Edith and Sam and the university for sponsoring this decoration to libraries because once again I want to emphasize public libraries are where people have access to information in all of its formats. So thank you very much.